Uh, Brazil today is uh, one of the BRICs, so it's, uh, it's becoming part of the mainstream discussion in financial and economic uh, newspapers, and etc. Uh, but still we have an economy which is much regulated with an enormous red tape. Uh, um, how, do you, how do you see um, countries such as Brazil that are uh, consolidating a mixed economy? Uh, how do you see they, uh, their, their role in the future, and especially now that it seems that this sort of management of, uh, of economies is doing well uh, with respect to the crisis? Well, initially, that sort of um, arrangement is going to do well because initially they have to deregulate like China has done and like India has done. And that gives a boost, a boost to the market economy and spurs growth. But as that growth continues, there's going to be more taxes generated and the government's going to get more greedy, it's going to make more promises and eventually it's going to, in a way, stifle that growth. So what I see happening is that uh, a pendulum swinging back and forth. Nesta segunda parte, o professor Salerno fala sobre a teoria das expectativas racionais e como conheceu a escola austríaca de economia. Joe, you hold today the position that Murray Rothbard had of uh, academic vice president of the Mises Institute. How do you see uh, uh, the spring up of different institutes all over the world, this bottom-up process of, uh, of institutes uh, appearing all over the world? It's a great development, Elio, and I know Murray Rothbard would have loved it. And I'm certainly uh, gratified by seeing so many institutes springing up with the names of great Austrian economists like Mises and Hayek. Uh, what's your impression of, of Murray? Um, I will talk a little bit about that at, at our conference, but um, Murray was of all things, extremely humble. He was an extremely humble man. No matter what sort of a scholar you were, for example, myself, I, I, I was such, certainly a much less, lesser scholar than himself, but any sign of productivity, Murray Rothbard always took the time to write a letter, make a phone call, and to encourage you to continue to write, to continue to you know, advance the Austrian and, and libertarian agenda. Uh, how do you take the charge of the uh, rational expectation theory of the neoclassicals that uh, the cycles are not caused by the ABCT, that people would expect uh, the, uh, governments to do that and could react to it? Yeah, uh, that's nonsense. It's laughable. The point is that people are not economists. That's why we teach economics. Um, if people could actually predict the, 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 um, the cycles, it would imply that, first of all, they have uh, a, a theory of the cycle in their heads, the correct theory, which we, we know that's not true, and secondly, that they would be able to figure out the motivations and the expectations of the Federal Reserve System, which sets the whole thing in, in motion. And thirdly, something that Mises pointed out, initially, yes, interest rates reach very low levels. So that might warn people that there's going to be a cycle. But then, as inflation heats up, interest rates go to historically high levels, and people misinterpret that in the beginning as being tight money, and they think that they're on firm ground in making these investments. So, um, once again, I would dismiss the criticisms of, of the rational expectation people. Joe, uh, going back in time a little bit, yes. how did you first uh, became acquainted with uh, Austrian economics? The first time I, I became acquainted with it was in the history of economic thought class when one of my professors, uh, when we went over the school, he talked about it, and he said uh, that the Austrian school was a movement that existed in the uh, late 19th century, and he said it was a very special movement because all three men were very brilliant and they were all devoted to promoting the same idea. It was only the very next year that I found out that the Austrian school actually had members that were living in today's world, and that was Murray Rothbard. I was given a very small pamphlet called Depressions, Cause and Cure, and I read that pamphlet in 45 minutes, and it changed my life because I realized at that point that everything I had learned in, in my principles of macroeconomics and intermediate macroeconomics was just nonsense and that, that it, it, you know, it, it didn't explain the real world. It wasn't based on, on, on real human action. But in, in, in a very short pamphlet, in 45 minutes, I learned why we had depressions, how depressions were actually caused by inflation, and how the depression itself was part of the cure for that inflationary boom. 
did you become a libertarian at that event, or uh, there, there was uh, any other event that uh, that made made you a libertarian? No, I, I became I became a libertarian about at the same time, or maybe a little before that. Um, when I had read a magazine, um, or actually I read the New York Times magazine, and they had an interview with Murray Rothbard. So I guess it was a little bit after I read that. And I realized that not only was he an economic theorist, but he was also a major libertarian thinker. And so it was at that point that I became a full-fledged libertarian. Joe, thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thank you.